Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another geometry lesson. Uh, today we're going to finish up our lesson on area, and we're going to look at how changing certain dimensions by different factors will change the overall perimeters and areas of these figures. Um, we are going to skip the do now, and we're going to move on to this introduction problem. So it says Tiana wants to increase the size of her circular pool. If her pool currently has a radius of 7 meters and she wants to double the radius, by what factor will the area of the pool increase? So go ahead, uh, pause the video, see if you can figure out that figure that out. Uh, notice you're not just finding the new area, you're finding out by what factor does the area of the old pool increase to get to the new area. Okay. So if we look at her old area, so area of the old, well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have pi times r, which is 7, so 7 squared. The area of the old is 49 pi. We don't have to round or do anything because um, it doesn't say we have to, you know, uh, find the area to the nearest tenth or the hundredth, etc. So we can just leave it at 49 pi. Units are so also aren't important here because we're just finding out by what factor does it increase. Uh, the area of the new is equal to pi r squared, but it says the radius doubles. So instead of 7, we get 14 for the radius. And this ends up being 196 pi. So by what factor, what did we multiply by to go from the new, or sorry, the old area to the new? And again, if you don't, if you can't just do that in your head, you don't see what it is, uh, remember, we could figure that out by doing um, the new over the old, just like we did with scale factors, right, when we looked at similar figures. And here, all circles are similar, so we're really just finding the scale factor here. Well, the area of the new is 196 pi. Area of the old is 49 pi. The pi simplify, and 196 divided by 49 gives us 4. The new area is 4 times as large as the old area if we double the radius. This is kind of what we're going to be looking at throughout the rest of this lesson. Uh, our examples may get a little bit more difficult because we may have multiple dimensions, right? A circle, we're only looking at the radius, but with other shapes, we could have a base, a height, etc. cetera. Um, but this is the idea, this is figuring out if we change one dimension or multiple dimensions, how does the overall area or perimeter change? All right, so let's move on. Uh, sometimes we will not be given specific dimensions, but still want to be able to figure out how changing dimensions affects perimeter and area or vice versa. So let's look at one and two. It's number one says, if a rectangle's length and width are both doubled, what is the effect on the perimeter? Draw a diagram to support your reasoning. It doesn't tell us what the original length and width are. All we know is that they're doubled. So let's sketch first. If I have a rectangle, We'll call this the old one. Uh, here's my length. Here's my width. Um, perimeter of the old. Well, that would be 2 times L plus 2 times W, right? Because perimeter, we're just adding all of the sides together. Uh, if I look at the new perimeter, well, I've doubled the length and I've doubled the width. So the perimeter of the new is 2 times 2L plus 2 times 2w. Uh, I guess I should have written the whole word here. Perimeter of the new. I thought we were going to get there. I thought we were almost going to get through a video without that happening. OK. Uh, this means that this new perimeter is 4l plus 4w. So. What is the effect on the perimeter? Well, uh, looks like the perimeter was multiplied by 2, the old perimeter. And again, to show that, 
perimeter of the new over perimeter of the old. That will show you what that factor is. So I get 4L plus 4W over 2L. Now it's going to happen all the time. Uh, 2L plus 2W. Now it may not seem trivial how we simplify this to get 2, but just think about, can I factor a common factor out, right? Um, well, I could factor out a 4 from my numerator. So if I factor out a 4, I get L plus W. And if I factor out a 2 from my denominator, I also am left with L plus W. Then we can simplify the L plus W factor, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So again, the factor by which the perimeter is increasing is 2. Let's look at the area. Again, I'd encourage you to sketch on your own. Um, you know what? I don't need to redraw these diagrams. That would be silly. But what I can do is write out the new equations. So area of the old is just length times width, because it's a rectangle. Uh, area of the new, well, that's 2L times 2W, so I get 4LW. So I think it's pretty clear we're multiplying by 4 here. The area is increasing by 4. But just again, um, we are going to be working with these ratios uh, today, so I'm going to keep writing them here. Uh, to figure out what that factor would have been had it not been straightforward. Let's make sure I do area, though, not perimeter. Uh, area of the new was 4LW over just LW. Simplify, we are left with 4. Um, so again, let's let's... Think about this. The perimeter is only increasing by a factor of 2. The area is increasing by a factor of 4, even though we just doubled the length and the width. So that may be something to think about as we continue. Why is the perimeter increasing by a different factor than the area? Well, it has to do with the perimeter being one-dimensional and the area being two-dimensional. So if I increase all the dimensions by a specific factor, like up above, we, in, we not increased, uh, I multiplied all the dimensions by two. That is going to multiply the old perimeter or the old circumference by two. So if all dimensions are multiplied by A, whoops, let me, uh, you know what? I'm just going to type this. That'll be easier. The new perimeter will be a... Uh, let's figure out a better way to write this. We will find the new perimeter by multiplying the old perimeter by A, or by whatever that factor is. The area, though, it's different. The area is two-dimensional. And if you think about units for perimeter, right, the units for perimeter are just centimeters, inches, meters, miles, etc. Units for area are always squared, centimeters squared, miles squared, meters squared, etc. So we're not just going to be multiplying the old area by the factor, or the scale factor, we're going to multiply it by the square of the scale factor. So we will find the new area by multiplying by the square of the scale factor. And we, we touched on this in our similarity unit. It, it was pretty brief, but we did touch on it, uh, the difference between you know, the new perimeter of an object and the new area of an object when we uh, scale it up or scale it down by a certain factor. I want to go back here, though. Uh, this is important that this is only the case if all the dimensions are multiplied by A. 
It's possible that we only multiply one of the dimensions by a certain scale factor, or maybe we multiply the length by one number and the width by a different number. In that case, this gets thrown out. So this only works for similar figures, right? Because this is the relation we've already talked about. Let's take a look at some of these other ones where we're not multiplying every dimension by the same number. So let's take a look at number three down below. Again, with all of these, work it out yourself or attempt to work it out yourself before you come and listen to the explanation. So it says the height of a parallelogram is doubled. What is the effect in the area? Draw a diagram to support your reasoning. Well, again, a uh, parallelogram looks something like this. We have a base. We have a height. Uh, my new parallelogram, the height is doubled. So I get 2h, but my base stays the same. So you can do these individually first, like we've been doing. Uh, the area, just base times height, for the old area of the new is 2 base times height. So I think it's clear to see that we are multiplying by 2 to get the new area. Um, however, I'm going to set up that ratio again. I keep wanting to write P for perimeter. Uh, but area of the new over area of the old, area of the new, 2BH, area of the old, just BH. So we simplify and we get 2. So new new area is twice the old area. So again, um, in this case, we only multiplied one of the dimensions by two. So that relationship we looked at above where the area, you know, is we multiply the old area by the square of the scale factor that doesn't work here because we didn't multiply every dimension by two. We just multiplied one. So you actually have to go through some of the math and figure out, okay, you know, if I only multiply one by this number, how does it change? Let's look at a different one. Let's keep going. This one, we have different dimensions being multiplied by different numbers. So it says a triangle's base is multiplied by three and the height multiplied by one fourth. What is the effect on the area? Well, again, I'm going to keep sketching these out. I think eventually you won't need to actually see the sketch. So originally, our triangle area of the old. So equal to one half base times height. My new one, my base is multiplied by three. Let's go look something like this. My height though is smaller. So it's one fourth times h, right? Because it's being multiplied by one fourth. So the area of the new, my goodness. Area of the new is one half times three b times one fourth h, which is equal to three eighths b times h. Well, it's not that clear what we're multiplying by, right? How it's being affected. So this is kind of the first example where I think it may be beneficial to actually write out this ratio to really figure it out. So the area of the new goes in my numerator over area of the old. So I get 3 eighths base times height over 1 half base times height. Uh, the b's and the h's simplify. So that leaves me with 3 eighths over 1 half uh, to simplify a fraction divided by a fraction, right? Multiplied by the reciprocal. So 3 eighths times 2 over 1, that gives me 6 eighths, that gives me 3 fourths. So our new area is actually smaller than our old area. 
um, and we would multiply the old area by 3 fourths to get our new area. So our new area is 3 fourths the old. Uh, let's move on to number five. Actually, let me take a look here. Uh, yeah, we are going to do number five. I was just taking a look at the other ones to see if I wanted to skip it. Uh, this one's different, though, which is why I want to go over it. Uh, this time it says the square's area is tripled. So they're not tripling a dimension of the square. They're tripling the area, and we need to work backwards and figure out, okay, what's the effect on the sides? So we can still think about it the same way. I can still sketch a diagram. So this will be my old. Uh, if it's a square, right, all sides are the same. Right, so the area of the old is just equal to s squared, base times height for a square. Um, my new square, I don't know what I'm multiplying each side by. So I'm going to have to say, you know, xs. Because I don't know what I'm multiplying by. I just know that I'm going to be multiplying by something. So the area of the new square is going to be xs squared. And it's important to understand that because this is the key to the whole problem. I know that I'm multiplying the sides by a number. I, it just doesn't tell me what that number is. Instead, it tells me what the ratio should equal. So when I set up this ratio of area of the new over area of the old, well, my area of the new is the product S xs squared uh, time, or sorry, over s squared, but I know that's equal to 3 because it's saying a square's area is tripled. So what I need to do is solve this equation right here for x. Well, if I simplify my numerator, I get x squared times s squared all over s squared is equal to 3. Simplify the s squareds, I get x squared is equal to 3. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to the square root of 3. So think about what that means. Right? What does that mean in terms of the dimensions of the square? Well, it means that each dimension of the square, and they're all the same because square has four equal sides, I'm multiplying each side of the square by the square root of 3. And this makes sense, right? If I find the area of my old square, right, that we already said that was s squared, if I multiply both of my sides of my new square together, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, s times s is x, x squared. So you can see that I am increasing by a factor of 3. So we can say each side of new square is increased by a factor of root 3, or the square root of 3. Okay, uh, we are going to cut the video off there. I think we've done enough for this lesson. I think you get the idea. Um, again, I really want you to practice setting up these ratios to help you figure out, you know, how much the, uh, or what the, what the factor is between the old and the new shape. Um, I I don't want to call it a scale factor because not all the times it is, right? Sometimes it's a scale factor if you're multiplying every dimension by that number. But in a lot of these problems, you see that sometimes we're multiplying one dimension by three, another dimension by one half. And in that case, right, they're not scale factors because if we think of a scale factor, we're applying that scale factor to every single dimension. So in that case, there are scale factors, but only for a specific dimension. So just be careful. Um, some of these would be dilations, right? If we're relating this back to unit seven, um, some of these are dilations when we multiply every 
every dimension by the same number. But others, you know, we're just picking and choosing which dimensions to enlarge, which dimensions to shrink. And, you know, the area and the perimeter may change, but what we're doing is not a true dilation because different dimensions are changing in different ways. Okay, uh, again, that's going to do it. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you next time.